What is going on, Wolfpack Nation? Thank you so much for tuning in here for another amazing episode here. As we are so excited today to welcome Madison Hayes, number 21, a guard for the women's basketball team. Madison, thank you so much for joining us here today. Thank you for let, having me here. This is great. Yeah. Absolutely. No, it's, it's, you know, it's an honor. I mean, I, I know, uh, kind of give uh, the fans a little bit of background. I was uh, telling you a little beforehand, I've definitely a huge respect of your game for sure. You know, love the aggressiveness on the defensive and the rebounding side. Uh, you know, I know that even Wes Moore has made in a statement basically saying that he sees you as a three-way player, you, you know, offensively, defensively and rebounding. And, uh, you know, definitely looking forward to, you know, seeing you on the court more, uh, this year for sure. But, uh, so, Kind of uh, wanted to kind of start, you know, really kind of talking about, you know, just kind of your 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 love of basketball, kind of growing up, you know, uh, like what was your kind of initial, you know, fine tuned uh, in terms of what made you, I guess, discover your love of basketball? You know, was it, you know, family or was it just you yeah. know watching on TV? Um, so I really didn't start playing basketball till like eighth grade. Oh wow! Um, softball was my first love. Hey. Um, I played catcher like all my life. Um, and I was starting to get recruited, but then I started growing faster. You know, my knees was getting bad and, okay. um, but then eighth grade, like I just really fell in love with like the game and like the pace of the game. And it was always all and go 24 seven. Like there's no stopping and softball. It was, it got boring, boring when you got older. Mm-hmm. So, um, I just really loved basketball and like watching it. My parents played college my dad played in the nba for like a couple of years so mm-hmm. it's always been a part of our family they didn't force it on me though so that's yeah what I like. no absolutely well i mean it's definitely worked in nicely and i'll tell you too you know because it's uh that was one of the things that kind of helped me back uh with baseball because uh you know like if I was going to play baseball, I always had an interest in catcher, but I just couldn't stay, you know, you know, on the ground with my knees bent like yeah. that for so long. That's that does a number. I don't know how MLB uh, players do it, right. like you know, but you know, uh, all all power to them. So uh, yeah, so you know, so when you first started playing, you know, because like we were talking, you know, a little bit about how you know Wes Moore sees you kind of a three way player. Um, right. You know, I know that. Uh, you know, again, you could do it all, but, you know, do you kind of see yourself as kind of a similar game, you know, at all? Like, do you kind of compare yourself at all in terms of what your game is to maybe another player? Um, so a lot of people has compared my game to Kia Nurse. Um, okay. Just as, you know, aggressive. She's a three-way player as well. Um, mm-hmm. I've just always been that type of player um, growing up from eighth grade to now. Just because I was behind from everybody else, I started late, and you know I had to catch up and even be better. So I've always just done the little things and even more so scoring. So yeah, absolutely. And do you do you have a preference? I mean, you know, do you enjoy you know one versus the other? Uh, you know, in terms of you know playing defense, rebounding the ball, or playing offense? Um, I think the little things get me going, and then. I don't know. That's just always been my thing. Like even like in the Louisville game, like when I went in and, you know, got a tip off that kind of just started something, a spark or something going. And it just ever since then, it just always been my thing. So absolutely. Well, and so, you know, kind of talking to, uh, you know, one of the things that, uh, you know, I guess, you know, again, we're kind of basically kind of starting from the beginning, kind of working our way, you know, to, to, uh, you know, coming here to NC state and things like that. So, um, you know, obviously being from Chattanooga, Tennessee, uh, mm-hmm. you know, and being, you know, so highly recruited like you were, um, you know, uh, who were some of the other schools that were highly recruited to you, uh, b- besides Mississippi state and was NC state on that list initially when you were yeah. recruited? Yeah. Um, them two. Um, well, I'll just say my top five. So it was Mississippi state, NC state, uh, Tennessee, North Carolina, and Louisville. Nice. Um, that was my big five. Um, mm-hmm. I really liked, good. yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I just didn't want to stay too close to home, but not too far to where I can't go home. So right. that was yeah. my big thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, so what was kind of that selling factor, you know, you know, originally, you know, and, uh, you know, I, obviously again, we're, we're glad to have you here, you know, at the end of the day, yeah. you're here in state and, and obviously, you know, we're thrilled to have you here for sure. But I mean, like, was it just kind of a, a situational thing? Like, did you feel that there was more possibility of like playing time, things like that? Uh, you know, Mississippi state, what was kind of the driving factor? 
to like go to Mississippi State, that's what you're asking? At, at the time, yeah, yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah, okay. Um, I really want to be a part of like a family atmosphere, not even just like with the fans, but with the team and the coaches. Like it felt like a family, not just, you know, saying it because it's different when you say it and it doesn't match up with behavior. Sure. Um, and obviously I was committed to, you know, Coach Schaefer um, before they had the coaching change. And, mm-hmm. you know, it was just, you know, it wasn't a fit for me after the year. Like after I looked back, even though I played a lot and, you know, I had freshman team, um, it yeah. just, I knew I wouldn't be able to just, you know, stay there. And, you know, I didn't want to feel miserable there. Like, you know, so. And, yeah. Yeah. Because let me ask you one question. I, I'll let Greg and Macon jump in here, but this because this is one thing which I've always wanted to ask somebody, and you kind of bring it up perfectly, which is that when you're committing, you know, one of the biggest things that they say is, you know, that you shouldn't necessarily commit to the coach. You also commit right, to the school, right. you know, as well. You know, just you know, so that way, if a coaching change happens, it's not necessarily like you know, oh, the coach is left. Okay, well, I'm out of here, kind of deal. Right. Um, but like you know, like is there a balance to that at all? I mean, because I, I know at the end of the day, I mean, obviously, a coach is key because that's the person then they that's developing you that's the uh, person that you have the most relationship with when you're being recruited kind of deal like that's the person that you know is talking to your parents and things like that like is there a balance there you know in terms of committing to a school compared to committing to a coach yeah like even you know at Mississippi State like I had a great two-year relationship with uh coach Schaefer um like even on my official visit, when I went on my official visit we went fishing because I like fishing so you know we did that and so, like, you know, you know, the new coach came in, I obviously gave her a try only because I didn't want to base it up what everybody else said. You know, I want to see for myself. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I've known her before, you know, she's from Tennessee. So um, we have that in common. So but I mean, it's a it's a balance. I just wouldn't put all my commitment onto one person. Yeah. But it's always good to have a relationship with your coach, no matter what. That's the biggest thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, yeah. Now I got to ask, like, is anybody else on the team like fishing? <laughs> I don't know. I, I love, yeah. I love fishing. I don't know why it's just always been a relaxing that's thing awesome. to me. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Um, that's really cool. I'm just, I, so I'm, like, I'm curious, Mississippi state, you were, you were made, I think all, all freshman team when you were there. And yeah. like, it sounds like to me it was just a matter of, it wasn't really about performance and scheme or whatever. It was truly, in your heart, you weren't happy at that point and moving to yeah. NC State. And so are you, have you, do you feel like when you came to state, you found that same, you know, the same thing, what you were looking for when you went to Mississippi state, is that the case? Have you built on anything from Mississippi state as far as there's something more here that's different from there? Not as a shot to Mississippi state, but I don't know if you yeah. get where I'm asking that. Yeah. I'm, um, so like when I got, you know, I've known Coach Moore for a long time. Uh, my parents known him for a long time. You know, he coached at UTC for mm-hmm. many, many years, even though yes. I don't want to tell his age, but he's coached <laughs> there for a long time. He's won a lot of games. <laughs> we, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> we can Wikipedia so, that. Don't um, worry. You know, <laughs> I knew him sort of. So, like, you know, I've always had that relationship with him and you know, um, when I got here, I knew veterans was going to be here. You know, I know that I have to earn my spot, whatever sure, spot right. that was. And I knew that if I didn't have a spot, I was going to play my role as a good teammate, no matter what. If mm-hmm. Even if I'm playing or if I'm not playing, if I'm sitting on the bench the whole year, I'm going to do my job as they would want me to. And just because I want to genuinely. Um Amen. Yeah, so um love that. You know, I hope I play more and I want to play more. I feel like I've gotten a lot better this year and I've found, you know, that happiness that I've been trying to look for, you know, into basketball cuz I want it to be fun. You want it to be fun at the end of the day, not miserable or like dreading it. Um mm-hmm. but I feel like ever since I came here, it's it's been great so far and, you know, he's taught me a lot of things and you know, being a two-way player, three and the four, you know, that's just the biggest thing for me. He's really developing us as a team. And well, Absolutely. I'm curious because you're mentioning that phrase two-way player or three-way player often. And I mm-hmm. just, you seem to be really um, mindful of that skill set. And so I'm guessing that is something that you probably, my correct understanding that something that you probably feel like 
you bring as a value to the team that kind of maybe I don't want to say separates you from others, but is it makes right. you distinguishes your and your abilities from others. Can you talk about how important that is to have that versatility in your game, and at least from your perspective, having that ability to do so? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Obviously, I've had that experience through high school. Um. I played one through five. I was the biggest on my team, mm-hmm. so I had to, you know, be that one through five, taking the ball out, getting the ball back, posting up on the other end, or do something. Um. I feel like. You know, I was, you know, kind of iffy about the four player in college because they're bigger than me. And, you know, yeah. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of anything or anybody. Let's go. I want to bang. We can bang back hey. and forth. That's just, that's just how I am as a person <laughs> and a player. Let's go. And so, um, you know, I think that he just really, like, took that part of me that I can apply to my game, not even just in college, but in the pros. Mm-hmm. You know, like take that matchup, you know, like because they're going to be bigger than me and I'm on offense. I can kill. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like, but, you know, I'm going to have help from my teammates on defense, obviously, but I'm going to do my best, you know, regardless. So that's. I love yeah. it. And, yeah. and, 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 and let me throw this in there, too, uh, for you making as well to kind of prove that as well. So so Madison's stats in high school uh, during her high school career, she had 3,055 points, 1,583 rebounds, 459 assists, and 457 steals. So, yeah, three-way. What's that? You forgot the other stat. Well, no. yeah. Well, yeah. No, yeah Player no, two of the time, year for Tennessee, class, right? Class uh, 3A Miss Tennessee basketball <laughs> winner. Yes, two times. So, you know it. Uh, but go ahead, Megan. Sorry. Yeah. I want to throw that no, in there I, for I, you. I, I think yeah. she's hit on I was just curious how she felt like just because she was, you were mentioning that, Madison, how that's important to have that skill set and how valuable that is, at least for you, whereas other players mm-hmm. may not have that. And there's obviously other players like, you know, that have that two way, three way ability on other right. teams. Um, sure. I, I just thought it was interesting because you mentioned that like a few times, so I wanted to highlight that. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, Absolutely. Um, yeah. Cause, um, you know, doing the little things always matter because, you know, not everybody does it. And that's just how I, you know, as a player, that's how I got my playing time. Like, as a freshman, that's how I got my playing time because I know they have more experience than me. You know, I'm just coming in. You know, she wants defense, rebounding. You know, you can add scoring in there. That's fine. You know, you can score whenever you want. But, you mm-hmm. know, the little things always matters, and not a lot of people do it. So I do it. I'm kind of like the hey. hard hatter right now. So, you know. I love it. Before we continue, I want to take a quick second to tell you about our sponsor, Flatlands Dressup Insurance Group, that has our whole world covered with agents in five offices throughout eastern North Carolina to help you decide how much coverage you need, offering policies for home and auto, recreational vehicles, commercial, crop, health, life, and employee benefits. They are able to combine options to find a comprehensive solution that works for you. Flatlands Jessup protects the things you love so you can spend less time wearing and more time enjoying them. Find them on Facebook and Instagram at Flatlands Jessup. You can also visit their webpage at www.flatlandsjessup.com. So please make sure to go and check them out. Yeah. And, you know, in, in Madison, too, you know, I know that, uh, you know, you know, you've mentioned Westmore multiple times. And one of the things that I always think about is uh, when we first started Tuffy Talk back in, you know, January of last year, we had uh, we were lucky enough to have Ace Koenig, uh, you know, a gar- a former state guard, uh, you know, three point uh, uh, record holder uh, for NC State. Yeah. And yeah. one of the things that uh, she mentioned was how meticulous, how detail oriented Westmore is and the fact that I mean she would get yelled at for being like six inches off the spot that she was supposed to be on the floor and right. uh, yes. and it was like it was like to her like this like like why are you, like really you want me to be like six inches to my right rather than right here like that's that's insane right. but I mean it, it it makes a difference and because and because one of the things that she even said too is that there's nobody in her opinion that watches more film than he does there's nobody that prepares right. as much as he does and so can you kind of, kind of talk a little bit i mean just because again I, mean, I think that there's no doubt that westmore deserves every bit of credit every bit of praise and then some right. in, in my opinion and so i mean can you talk a little bit about that in terms of you know not only just you know what it's been like kind of adjusting to you know to westmore's game but just kind of mm-hmm. you know talking about him as a coach perspective and kind of what kind of separates him from most of the other coaches that you've uh, worked with throughout your career? I think that for one, he genuinely cares about his players. And I think that's a great thing. Um, I think that 
he develops us for all of us. Like we're going to go pro, even though that might not be everybody's thing. He's still mm-hmm. going to give you the, the tools that you need. If you're trying to go, you can do it. And if you change your mind, you still got the tools to do it from him. Um, especially the film thing. She was definitely right about that. He <laughs> watches film after a game. He'll go, we'll get back. From an away game, he'll watch film. He'll have the film ready. All the staff will have the film ready, and we'll be ready to go in the morning. It's just, it's mm-hmm. like clockwork for him. It's he's so like detailed, like she said. It's like when I was playing the four, like I had to be at a certain spot to like, this is how it's gonna work. This is where you gotta be at. Like literally, like mm-hmm. right here on this X. I'm like, okay. Yep. I mean, I'll try to get there. You know. Because you don't think it matters until like it happens the way, you know, he is describing it. And then it's like, it clicks, like he was right. Like Mm -hmm. we gotta, we gotta keep doing this. You know, Mm -hmm. it takes time obviously, you know, cause we think we're right all the time and we're not. And you know, coach Moore, you know, he'll, he has enough patience to where, you know, he'll kind of like, okay, like you gotta get to this spot or, you know, it's not gonna work or whatever. But mm-hmm. he's very meticulous about that, for sure. Yep. Well, and, uh, you know, because one of the things I remember, too, you kind of talk about the details. And this is something, too, which I I know from being, a being you know, playing sports, you know, throughout, you know, my, my youth is that, you know, and I was a football equipment manager and we actually had uh, the head coach for Arizona State. So Herm yeah. Edwards came and, uh, and spoke to us. And one of the things that he talked about is that it's so important in sports that people – they they talk a lot about what to do. They talk about a lot about when to do it and how to do it. But a lot of people don't talk a lot about why to do it. And right. I think that that's one of the things that Westmore and, and again a lot of players that are the best of the best. They not only know what to do, but why it's important that that's done. And because that way it kind of helps it helps the player kind of buy into into what they're doing and what what they're trying to achieve here. And, uh, so again, it, it's, uh, it, that's why I just, I just, you know, it just gets me excited. Like, you know, hearing you talk about, you know, again, it's about the details, it's about the little things. And, uh, because again, sometimes it's, you know, forgotten about and, and especially in a game like basketball where most players, all they care about is putting the basketball in the hoop. I mean, you know, that's, that's the most satisfying thing is, you know, you know, swishing a shot and you hear, and you hear, you know, the, the swish sound. And I mean, that's the most satisfying, but you know, right. when like somebody like, like yourself kind of even takes satisfaction out of just like you said the tip ball, the little things like that's, right. that's, that's, Hey, I love that. So I, I just kind of, you know, just wanted to kind of, you know, shout out to you, but also to just kind of, you know, something to think about for those listening right now in terms of, you know, if you have kids, you know, that are, you know, competing, you know, or trying to, you know, take the next level, but you know, again, all about the details. So, um, yeah. So, you know, it kind of, uh, you know, wanted to kind of talk a little bit to, you know, about this last year, you know, in, in that, uh, you know, obviously it was a very, just like you said, a very experienced team. You know, obviously a lot of, of great players with Rand Perez, Los Canane, Kai Crutchfield, Kayla Jones, you name it. And uh, so, you know, one of the things I think that's very interesting is obviously women's basketball, I feel, is is starting to diversify. I mean, like usually, like, you know, obviously over the last 10 years, it's been pretty much UConn, South Carolina, and then everybody else. Yes. And But, you know, as of recently, you know, like, you know, state, we're getting up there. Um, you know, Stanford, you know, competing yeah. uh, religiously and then, you know, Louisville's getting up there, things like that. Um, but, you know, one of the things that, you know, is is kind of a balance, too, is that, you know, a lot of players kind of talk about, you know, what's more important to them, winning a national winning a championship is a playing time, is a development, is it school? And so, you know, for you to come to NC State and, uh, you know, Knowing, just like you said, that there's that you're going to have to play a role eventually, but then you're going to get the spot is is big. But you know, mm-hmm. kind of talking about, uh, you know, uh, the NCAA tournament. You know, what was? Did you feel that even though again, obviously, you know, didn't necessarily start necessarily, but I know you had some minutes, uh, you know, in the early rounds, things like that. Did you mm-hmm. gain anything in terms of learning points that you feel you know kind of developed you as a player? You know, having that experience being a part of the NCAA tournament like that and going, you know, into an environment like Bridgeport, things like that? Yeah. um, Well, first, let me say, like, at Mississippi State, we didn't go to the tournament. We didn't even make it. So it's like, you know, obviously that broke broke me because it was just like, dang, like, I wanted to go so bad because it's just an experience that, like, is so different. Like, when you 
get to the Elite Eight, to the Final Fours, and then obviously to the National Championship. But um, last year, it was just it was very the learning things that I've like felt was just like, you know, this is like a learning thing for me, like learning from our seniors, you know, just um, like just the like the thing that they have with them is just that they always wanted to learn stuff. And like they weren't always just not wanting to talk about anything or not wanting to learn. Um, and that's what I took from them as the seniors on our team, because, you know, they wanted to be there. It wasn't just like, you know, they just, okay, well, let's just blow by these teams. Like we took it one step at a time. As you saw, like we had a little step and we put the little sticker every time we went past the team, like that was our step to the next yep. thing. Um, mm-hmm. And that's one thing that I've learned. You just take it one step at a time. Don't ever look too far ahead when you have the present. That's one thing I've learned from when I was in the game. Love that. Love that. Um, you know, and, and so obviously with, uh, you, you know, the challenges of playing, you know, UConn in Bridgeport for sure, you know, yeah. and because I, I know obviously Westmore is definitely not a guy to say, you know, poor, poor pitiful us. I mean, then they, he, he said what's, you know, factual and saying, I mean, it, it wasn't right, but you know, and, 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 you know, we definitely, you know, you should speak up for sure. But, you know, then they, you got to deal with the hands that are dealt and, uh, you know, especially too, you know, I mean, again, it's, it's a life lesson thing. And so, you know, I, I guess, uh, you know, kind of, you know, what was your kind of initial, you know, reaction when, when, you know, you, you learned the news of, of playing UConn, you know, was it, you know, immediately like, you know, what the heck or was it like, all right, then fair enough. Like, you know, we're going to beat them in their own house kind of deal. Was, even though, you know, I didn't play that game. I was ready. You <laughs> know, I've always, cause you know, when you're growing up seeing like UConn is always winning, you want to be that team to just, just beat them like it's just it's yes. exciting i felt like you know even though we was in connecticut which you know is wrong but that's what we was dope and i felt like we had every chance to beat them and it just wasn't you know our time it just wasn't Absolutely. our time and i feel like that's we fought the hardest fight and you know we had two overtimes you know there's you know it's just it sucks, but I really like that was probably one of the funnest games that I've probably had in like my whole entire career. Like that was really fun. Well, because you know, go ahead, Greg. For me, being at the game, I sat right directly okay. across from the, from from your bench and watching um, every from from the the most freshman of freshmen to the most senior person on that team. Everyone was engaged, like you're saying, and that you kept your teammates that you even though you weren't on the court, but you were in the game, like you're saying. Right. Like, so you get you guys, you kept your teammates up the whole time um, when, when and that was just a game of runs. I mean, we would go on a run. They would go on a run. And that I I've been to some great sporting events in my life that hands down and, and, and being a state fan, I'm biased. But right. mm-hmm. that was the best event I've ever been to in my life, just from the atmosphere, from the game itself. And that's the one thing that I would wish that right. the women's game would get more attention right. because you guys deserve that attention. Um, so for you, just being a part of that game, what what did that mean? Because, yeah. I mean, there was a lot of talk yeah. about that game before and afterwards. Just so just just tell me your thoughts about having just having the the opportunity to be there for that, for that, think, for that moment. You know, it was a blessing for all of us to be there. If you really want to be honest. I mean, like, yeah. you know, they, you know, they've been stuck at the sweet 16 spot and, you know, Raina got that steal mm-hmm. and hit the yes, layup. It was, let's just, go. it was super exciting. Like, I'm just like, yeah. oh my God, we're going to lead eight. Like mm-hmm. it was really like an exciting <laughs> moment for us in the locker room. And now it's just like, now we're finna, we're gonna kick Yukon's butt now. Like, Let's go. Yeah. Now it's like we're in Bridgeport. This is like basically five minutes from them. So mm-hmm. it's like, you know, it's just take on the adversity and then just play. Like this is this is what we came here for. You know, so can you answer the question? How does the team personally feel about that? Because I don't think we've heard that angle yet. About uh being in Bridgeport. Yeah. In Bridgeport, yeah, I know, I know. Uh, Wes Moore kind of was like, "Yeah, that was is not ideal, or whatever." People have verbalized that, but I don't think I've heard it from the team. Well, how do y'all feel about that? Um, 
It was <laughs> how like how much disrespect did you feel? It was like like at first it was like how? Then it was like, well, we're the number one seed. You would think, mm-hmm. you know, we would be in Greensboro or like, you know, or South Carolina can go to, you know, Bridgeport or something like that. Like it just mm-hmm. it kind of like it made us upset, but at the same time we were still excited because at the end of the day, like we wanted to go as far as we wanted to go. And I felt like we yep. had we had so many chances to beat them and it was just like it just wasn't our time. And I felt like right. it's some of those Absolutely. runs that they had were like important. Like mm-hmm. runs. They had really important yeah, runs. The right moment mm-hmm. in time. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. And it's yep. just like Dang, and then like you know, then the two overtimes it just it saved us, but yeah, it just no, absolutely we didn't, we didn't get it in time. So I mean, it was a great game. Like I rewatch yeah. it sometimes. A really great game. So, yeah, so, I do. do you really? So does that yeah, motivate if you? Don't mind to... mistakes and stuff. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. No, no. Just again, we're we're going. I'm like at some point I got to end part one. We got to move into part two here. But again, yeah, we could no. definitely pick this right back up here for part two. So again, if uh, please make sure again tune in with us for part two here. So we continue this conversation again, so we can pick up right where we left off right here. Make sure again if you haven't already, make sure you give Madison a follow again. I you know on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, uh you know we'll make sure to have. All of her uh, uh, links to her social media in the link below. So make sure to go and give her a follow. And also to make sure to go support the women's basketball team. If you haven't bought season tickets already, make sure to do that. That is a must do. And uh, again, uh, Madison, anything else you want to plug in here as well? Uh, I don't got anything until part two. So All right, cool. Let's do it. All right. Well, thank you all so much again. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, get this video a like, and then uh, give us a follow Tuffy Talk now on Twitter and Instagram. Thank you all so much. Go Pack, y'all. See you all part two.